This is the big and bold on Cloud Monster 2. And it looks pretty similar to the on Cloud Monster 1. And how is this different than the also big and bold on Cloud Eclipse? Let's lace up the on Cloud Monster 2 and take it for a run. Yo, what's going on? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews running shoes here on YouTube. And today I wanna to talk to you guys all about the On Cloud Monster 2. But before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. On sent me these shoes for the purpose of review so I didn't have to pay for these shoes. However, no one's paying me to make this video or to include their shoe in this video. And no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the On Cloud Monster 2. And first, let's go over some specs. This is a 35 millimeter stack height shoe with a six millimeter drop giving us 29 millimeters of stack height in this shoe. And that's quite a bit bigger than last year. Last year started at 29 in the heel, maintained the same drop, but only had 23 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And Ana's telling me that the reason for the difference in stack height is that the clouds are now bigger. And now I'm not sure that the actual holes that are in this midsole that they're calling the clouds are bigger than in the shoe from last year. In fact, they look pretty similar to me, but something that is definitely noticeable is that there is a second color of foam here in this shoe, and that is a more dense top layer of midsole foam on top of a I guess regular layer of midsole foam that comprises the, the channels that make up the cloud tech uh, in this midsole. And in contrast to the speed board, which is kind of like a hard piece of plastic, kind of like a carbon fiber plate, but also very much not like a carbon fiber plate uh, that they've had in other traditional on shoes, like in the on cloud monster one. This year, the material that the speed board is made out of is nylon and it's a bit shorter. It's not a full length speed board this year either. So quite a bit of changes in there. Now protecting all this midsole is rubber that covers most of the surface of the bottom of the shoe. In fact, it's pretty similar to the pattern of rubber we've had last year. And while we're looking at the bottom of the shoe, I will point out that there is a very subtle difference that took me a long time to notice. In fact, there's two of them. One is that there's a little bit of a protrusion right here at the side of the foot, kind of like on the inside of the pad of your big toe. Uh, that gives it a little bit more of a medial protrusion. It's something that I, I generally am seeing in a lot of big stack height shoes that also still want to be able to move quickly. The other thing that I've noticed on the bottom of these shoes is that the channel that exposes the speedboard in Cloud Monster 1 has been filled in with midsole foam so we can no longer see uh, the nylon speedboard that's in the on Cloud Monster too. Moving to the upper, we have what to me looks almost identical to the upper that we saw last year. Certainly there are some color differences, but in terms of fit and finish, it looks almost exactly the same as the on Cloud Monster version one. But again, a closer inspection shows that there's one additional lace loop that's in the lacing system here. And there's just a tiny bit more padding at the back of the heel cup in this shoe. Otherwise, they're pretty much the same and very difficult for me to discern just by looking at the uppers, which is on Cloud Monster 1 and which is on Cloud Monster 2. And I do wanna note that of the upper materials in here, it's made out of 82% recycled polyester. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a total weight of 10.5 ounces or 300 grams. Now that we talked about the paper specs, let's go over what it was like to actually run in the shoe. And I feel like this is very much a monster experience despite all the changes that we've discussed at length here already. I feel like I'm getting a very similar experience compared to what I had last year in the On Cloud Monster 1. It's a shoe where I'm starting to feel that the clouds in On Cloud shoes actually make sense. I start to feel the squishiness of the clouds and overall it's a stable yet bouncy experience that that I find pleasant for easy day running. But I will say because of that firmer top layer, 
ultimately what I'm feeling in the shoe is a little bit more of like impact absorption, like the foot hits the pad and you're not getting shock sent up through the foot. Uh, but on the downside of that, I'm losing a little bit of the spring back uh, that I feel like I got from the On Cloud Monster 1. So those would be some of the slight differences in feel that I'm sensing between these two shoes. But ultimately, it's still very much an On experience. So those of you who have been running in On shoes for a really long time are still going to enjoy and appreciate the On Cloud Monster 2. It still feels like there's a speed board in here. It still feels like there's that channel in the middle, which gives you that sense that the shoe is guiding your foot strike. Uh, sometimes I feel like that's a little bit aggressive or overly assertive, uh, but for those of you who have liked the way that on shoes feel in the past, you're still gonna get that sense uh, of like the shoe guidance from that center channel that's built into these on Cloud Monster 2. And as tall and as squishy as all the words are that we're using to describe these shoes. I feel like they're a little bit firmer than I would like for a shoe that's kind of of this size and intended to be used for everyday recovery days and some of your longer easy runs. And I think that the Cloud Monster 2, while it does feel different than the Cloud Monster 1, I feel like it's delivering a very similar experience and a lot of the sensations that I felt in Cloud Monster 1 can be pretty much cut and pasted onto the Cloud Monster 2. The upper is beautiful and very comfortable, but I feel like it's a little bit uncharacteristic from on in the sense that it's a little bit on the baggy side. There's a bit too much room for my foot in this shoe. I don't think that sizing down is necessarily the issue here. I just think that it's a very roomy shoe. I think it's intended to be that way. And so it feels baggy and a bit imprecise, which is not usually two adjectives that I would associate with the Swiss engineering of the on brand. If you're looking for a taller stack height shoe that isn't unstable, I feel like this is going to be a really good choice. My bigger, taller friends, I think, are also going to really enjoy the level of responsiveness and the level of decompression in this foam. And for anyone that's just looking for a shoe that's very comfortable to travel in, I took this uh, on a trip with the family out to Arizona. It's a really great travel and casual wear shoe as well. Now that we've talked about what it's like to run in the shoe, let's talk about some of the pairing options and the buying guide and alternatives. And that's, I think, where the video is gonna get the most interesting. But first, let's go over the pairing options. And because I think that the On Cloud Monster 2 is going to be very popular with my bigger, taller friends, I've put together like a bigger, taller running friend training rotation. So if you're going to use the On Cloud Monster 2 as your daily trainer and your easy run shoe, I think that uh, some pairing options you need are a faster day shoe and then a carbon plated eraser. So for your workouts, I feel like a shoe that you guys are going to enjoy is going to be the Hyperion Max. It is a DNA flash midsole shoe with no plate in it. It's got an extra tall stack height. That's what makes it max and a very comfortable yet speedy upper. I feel like this is going to be a fun shoe to take for your workouts and speed sessions. And for your races, a shoe that I think you guys are gonna love is gonna be the Hoka Cielo X1. This is a tall jumbo shoe that still fits within the World Athletics rules requirements for stack height. It's got a giant sweet spot for your foot to hit the ground, and it's got very pleasant Piba midsole racing foam in here that's gonna give you a great amount of cushion, but a great amount of snappiness as well. And I feel like those three are gonna be really fun to run in together. Now let's talk about the buying guide and some alternatives. The On Cloud Monster 2 comes in at $180, and I feel like that is a good price for an On shoe, but I feel like it's a little bit high. Let's take a look at what the competition in the market has in store. Now, I feel like the biggest competition that the On Cloud Monster 2 comes from within On itself, and I've already been talking a lot about the On Cloud Monster 1. Right now, it doesn't seem to be on sale. On shoes don't really tend to go on sale that much, but it is $10 cheaper than this year's On Cloud Monster 2. So I, I feel like if you're interested in the On Cloud Monster 2, save yourself 10 bucks. Go with the On Cloud Monster 1. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit cheaper and I feel like deliver a very similar experience. The other shoe that from On, which is competition, is the On Cloud Eclipse. Now, this is another shoe that comes in at $180, but delivers a very, on experience that's also very different at the same time. Now, what On seems to have been doing in these two shoes is they're kind of having parallel product lines. Now, there are traditional On shoes that have the cloud tech, the kind of like hexagonal 
cloud shapes. And then there's this new kind of cloud that On has been developing called Cloud Tech Phase that has more of like a triangular cloud shape. Uh, we've seen it in the On Cloud Surfer and in the On Cloud Eclipse. And in this kind of separate parallel line of products from On, they are kind of really doing away with the speedboard. The On Cloud Surfer doesn't have a speedboard at all. This one doesn't really have a speedboard, but it has kind of like a little torsion bar at the bottom. If you remember kind of the older Ultra Boost shoes that they used to have torsion bars, uh, that's kind of what they're using here instead of the speed board. Now, I don't like the speed board at all, and I like the extra squishiness and springiness and the extra kind of dynamicness of the Cloud Tech Phase. So I'm very much drawn to what the On Cloud Eclipse has to offer. I feel like it's a lighter shoe. It's a more exciting shoe. And I feel like it's a shoe that I actually can run uh, up to moderate paces in it really well for long distances. Plus, I feel like it does all the other max cushiony type things that the On Cloud Monster 2 does. But I think the way to decide between these two shoes is to decide which kind of on shoe you like. Do you like the original on or do you like the new kind of on with the Cloud Tech phase? Me, I'm going with the on Cloud Eclipse and the new Cloud Tech phase. Beyond that, in order to really understand like where the rest of the market sits when it comes from a pricing perspective, we've got to leave on for a minute and I'll give you even two more alternatives that I think you guys should be looking at if you're looking at the On Cloud Monster 2. First, let's take a look at the New Balance SE Elite version 2. Now, this has a race day foam, New Balance's fuel cell material, and a carbon fiber plate. This is a shoe that personally I used very similar to how I would use the On Cloud Monster 2. As an easy day shoe, as a recovery day shoe, or a long, slow distance kind of shoe. Something where I could pick up the pace a little bit, but kind of all the elements that are in here, including the carbon fiber plate, are really more for stabilizing the shoe for long periods of time rather than for making it race day fast. Uh, and so this is a shoe that I think stacks up really well against the On Cloud Monster 2, but I do feel like it's a softer, more dynamic experience. So again, my set of preferences lead me this way versus the On Cloud Monster 2. And the SC Trainer retails at 180, so price-wise, I feel like On's doing a pretty good job here. But depending on if you have a very large foot, you might be able to find this shoe for as low as $143. But for the rest of us, to the extent there's still inventory left, you're looking at the full 180 price. Now, the other shoe that I think is going to give On a little bit more of a run for its money is from Adidas, and that's the Boston 12. Now, this is a shoe that I don't love as a Boston, but when I look at the shoe without labels on it, I feel like it lines up really well with what the On Cloud Monster 2 is offering. The Boston 12 does have some race day foam in here, but it combines it with Light Strike and some energy rods that serve to stabilize all this foam together. It's a shoe that I like for easy days, recovery days, and some of those long, slow distance runs. Again, very much how I use the On Cloud Monster 2. So I think this stacks up really well. It's also very popular with my bigger, taller friends. And the Boston comes in right now at $160 retail. I really feel like this shoe should be on sale, but with the Boston Marathon around the corner and a new Boston edition having been released, I feel like it's gonna stay at that 160 for at least a little while longer. But still, even at that full retail, it's $20 cheaper than the On Cloud Monster 2. So those are my thoughts on the On Cloud Monster 2 and a bunch of its competition. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday over on the Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to talk to you guys over there in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?